Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining us today. We will be kicking off in just a couple minutes, letting you all settle in. In the meantime, please fill out the attendance survey that you will find in the chat. Hi everybody, my name is Denise Havden. I'm a career engagement educator at the UCLA Career Center. Thank you for joining us today for Inside Non-Tech Careers in Tech. We have quite a few panelists joining us today that are really interested to and excited to share um, their opportunities with you. So first we'd like to just um, go over some of the Career Center services that we have to offer so that you know of all the different ways that you can um, get help from the Career Center. Um, as you know, we are all virtual right now, and so we've definitely pivoted. And every resource that you were able to access before, you are still able to access, and then some. We've actually added some. So um, virtual career advising, you can find everything on Handshake, ucla.joinhandshake.com. Um, you can set up virtual advising appointments with our career engagement educators. Um, you can also access virtual drop-ins Tuesday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every week. Even if you're on vacation, we are still in drop-ins. Um, and these are great ways for you to quickly meet with someone if you're not able to find an appointment. Um, every week you can have resume, cover letter, and job and internship search strategies feedback. We also offer a lot of events and workshops such as this one, whether they're skill building or um, for you to explore your options, you can find them all on Handshake. Employer info sessions, employers are still very interested in connecting with you as much as you are interested in connecting with them. So definitely keep an eye out for employer info sessions on Handshake. They are there, they're ready, and they're excited to meet you. Um, On-campus recruiting, even though it sounds different now, uh, it's still happening. So you can still apply for jobs. You can still interview with employers, and you can find a lot of it on Handshake. Um, and then we also offer a lot of articles and digital resources. Under the resources tab in Handshake, you can find quite a few resources, and I'll just go into um, covering a few of them um, just right now. Next slide, please. So one of our newest is VMOC um, that we would really like to share with you. It's a 24-7 online resume review tool. It's kind of like your own personal AI assistant um, to give you feedback on your resume. It gives you, um, you highlights different things, shows you examples of ways that you can make your resume stronger. You can use it anytime. And then whether you'd like to have your resume reviewed just by it, or also you can use it to kind of start with your resume and then bring it to a career counselor or peer. And we're happy to look over it some more. Um, this will be great for you to access anytime, even if you're not able to um, reach us or if we're closed at the time and then follow up with us afterwards. Next slide, please. Thank you. And then we have this wide array of additional resources. Some of our newest ones include Parker, Dewey, and Forage, which are great for experiential learning opportunities. If you're trying to gain some additional experience, maybe COVID got in your way of um, plans that you had to gain experience, refine some skills, Skills. Parker, Dewey, and Forge are a couple of really great opportunities, and you'll see um, them on Handshake as well. Focus 2 is a self-assessment. Vault is really great for learning about industry insights. Going global is a really great tool, especially for our international students or students um, hoping to one day work abroad. I know post-COVID, of course. Uh, but Going Global has a lot of really, really great resources down to the kind of visas you might need, how much money you may need to make if you're going to live in a certain area, city guides, all sorts, and you're able to read all of it in your native language. An interview stream is really, really great for practicing your interviews. Um, they're all digital interviews now, right? So this is a great, um, a great tool to use to practice your virtual interviewing and make sure that you're as prepared as possible for when you get that call. 
Again, you can access the Career Center at career.ucla.edu and all of Handshake at ucla.joinhandshake.com. So now I will be handing it off to my colleague, Adrian, who will be moderating today's panel and introducing you to our panelists. Thanks, Sunit. Um, so really excited to be a part of this. Um, I am the Employer and Partnership Development Manager at the Career Center. I've been with the Career Center for um, two and a half years already and um, having opportunities where employers get to chat with students and engage with us on a more um, exciting level and more engaging level than just like a regular info session or a career fair. So uh, just a great uh, appreciation for our, our employer panelists for today. Um, I have the great joy of uh, sharing great people with you students. So hopefully you all get a lot of great takeaways from this and hopefully learn of, you know, best ways to um, get into the tech industry, even though you're not in tech background. Um, in my role as the Employer and Partnership Development Manager with the Career Center, I get to engage with a lot of employers, a lot of recruiters, um, provide them with a lot of strategies of how to connect best with students. Um, prior to UCLA Career Center, I was a recruiter for about five years. So UCLA was like one of the greatest schools that I recruited at. So excited to be on the other side and be the moderator for this panel. So without further ado, um, we are going to introduce our panelists. And so um, we'll definitely start with AJ Perez. Um, and then we'll have Brittany. Um, Dion Screws, and then Colin Jones and Rihanna De La Cruz. So if you all could um, just do a short, quick introduction of who you are, um, what your role is and what company you are with. Um, and then we'll get started with all the great questions. Hey, Adrian, you want me to kick it off? Uh, yes, AJ, that'd be great. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for attending today's webinar. Um, oh, real I'm quick, delighted. AJ, your camera is not on. Oh, sorry. No worries. Am I? You see me now? Yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Adrian. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you again for attending the webinar today. I'm AJ Perez, college recruiter with Oracle. I've been recruiting for over 12 years. Uh, three years have been with the Oracle team. And uh, a lot of what I recruit for is for non-tech roles. So this is a perfect panel for me to participate in and partnering with the Career Center here at UCLA. Um, we're always looking for great candidates uh, from all different types of majors. And um, the specific program that I recruit for is called Class Up. It's hiring currently for our full-time business development consultant opportunity uh, for our summer 2021 start dates. And we've had great success uh, targeting UCLA grads, again, from all majors. Um, and we don't require uh, any tech background uh, or tech skills or even sales or business development experience. Um, we put you through a very comprehensive training program to really teach you the ins and outs of working in the tech world, obviously uh, gaining product knowledge, Oracle's number one in business software. And we have operations all throughout the world uh, with over 130,000 employees. So we're very passionate about recruiting the best talent. Um, so really excited to be here today to share with you our opportunities. Thank you. Thanks, AJ. Um, awesome, and then we'll have Brittany. Hey everyone, I'm so excited to join you all today. So I am Brittany Dion Screws. I am a university relations liaison with Visa, but I have a background as a university recruiter, both on the tech and non-tech side. That's where I kicked off my career. So I definitely can have a conversation with you all today about the options. Um, we actually just wrapped up our hiring for our new grad rotation program. We actually had several of UCLA candidates apply. So hopefully we'll have some good news there. Um, but right now, our our focus more so is majority non-tech roles right now. So I do look forward to just sharing that with you all once we get later on in the panel. Perfect. Yes, please, please share those with our students in a little bit. Um, awesome. And then we'll have Colin go next. 
Thanks, Adrian. Hey, y'all. So my name is Colin Jones. If you haven't met or don't know me yet, but I am a lead college recruiting manager for at and I'm based out of our El Segundo office, which if you don't know where El Segundo is, it's right next to LAX. And so I am recruiting for pr primarily sales, but we do have some awesome internships um, around kind of general business and, and things of that nature as well that we recruit for. So we have a a robust slate of programs that we can tell you about here in our breakout sessions. Uh, but our, our main focus right now and has been in the past is just bringing in a robust, diverse slate of candidates and one that's reflective of the world we live in. And so we definitely want to make sure that we encompass that and bring in a, a very and educated and highly diverse workforce to come. So glad to meet y'all. Excited to give you feedback today. And uh, thank you, Adrian. Awesome. Thanks, Colin. And last but not least, we have Rihanna. Hello, everyone. Hello, UCLA. I am Rihanna. Yes, like the singer. Yes, it's spelled differently. Um, I am a university recruiter at Twitter. I have been there a little over a year now, but I've done university recruiting in the past at different companies and recruiting and sales in general. Super excited to be here. We have a lot of opportunities right now for both internships and new grad full-time roles. So looking at all of our non-tech talent out there, we definitely have a lot of opportunities for you that I'm excited to share with you today. So yeah, thanks, Adrian. Awesome. Thank you all for, yeah, great introduction of yourselves. I think um, since you guys are all recruiters, it's just so much easier to just explain, yeah, what you all do, um, kind of like in the background, which a lot of students don't necessarily understand. Like, it's a lot. Like, you're going through resumes, you're going through all these interviews and like career fairs and info sessions. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be a part of this panel. Um, students, um, we will be asking, I will be asking panelists, um, a lot of great questions that you'll probably get a lot of great information, but please, please, please put your questions into the Q&A portion of Zoom um, at 4.45. Hopefully we'll be staying on time at 4.45. You'll be able to answer, uh, get answers to your questions. So please put them in the chat, put them in the Q&A um, and we'll definitely have them answered. Um, don't be afraid to ask all the great questions. Um, Okay, so we will get to our first question. And for panelists, feel free to answer all of them, to answer just a couple. Um, I'll kind of read um, you know, your facial expressions and, and see if you're unmuted to answer these questions. But I would definitely encourage you all to answer them all. Um, so what helped you clarify and choose your specific degree or degrees and your career path? Hey, Adrian, I'll kick us off. Awesome. So I actually started my, uh, I guess, degree in architecture engineering. So totally I'm not doing anything with that right now, but just wanted to kind of tell you how I, I pivoted into what I did get my degree in, which is uh, marketing, sports media, and strategic communications. Um, so I had a knack for like architecture and buildings and kind of widespread city planning. But then I, I went into school and it, it just wasn't a fit. So I kind of transitioned into like other passions such as sports and, and really kind of the entertainment world. And so that's why I decided to get my degree path. And I'm not necessarily use, utilizing it right now, but I am utilizing some of the skill sets that I learned during my um, degree focus and while I was in school. So definitely have, I'm able to kind of utilize some of those key um, skill sets and bringing them over to my college recruiting role. So that's a little bit about myself. Started from um, STEM and then ended up in non-STEM. So that's exactly why I'm here. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I love like, you know, just different backgrounds that you could, different skills that you could use. Um, so I'm sure that's going to be the case for most of you all. So AJ, I know that you wanted to share some insight. Yes, you know, I, well, I've been far removed from college, but uh, for my undergrad, um, I was poli sci um, because I thought I really wanted to go into law school after undergrad and uh, realized uh, law school wasn't for me. And so when I did a self assessment to really recognize, you know, what do I enjoy? What am I good at? What motivates me? And, um, you know, I identified that I really enjoy developing relationships. I'm very competitive, um, I'm very results driven, and I wanted a career that I can 
really impact um, kind of my career growth and compensation and and be rewarded based on what I, you know, the work that I put in. And so looking at all my options, I just, you know, ended up getting into business management, went into a management training program that allowed me to start on the bottom, work my way up and really enjoyed sales and really thrived in that environment, you know, and based on my performance, I was able to move up into more leadership management roles. And that, you know, brought me to segue into getting into more corporate sales and did B2B. So I definitely have an extensive sales background, which is there probably the reason why, you know, when I went into recruiting, um, that's what I ended up doing was recruiting for sales. And so I've been recruiting for 12 years and Oracle actually, you know, hunted me down and recruited me three years ago to join their college recruiting team for North America. So that's how it all worked out. So don't feel like whatever your major is now, don't think that you're stuck with it. I'm sure if you're still passionate about what your initial, I guess, objective was in selecting that major, sure, go for it. But if you have a change of mind, it's okay. There's a lot of things you could do with your major that you've selected. So hopefully that helps. Absolutely. Thanks, AJ. Who would like to go next? I can go next. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So I have um, my background, or I guess my story is a little bit more traditional initially. So I actually have my bachelor's in business, and I always knew that I wanted to be within, you know, a business capacity. I just didn't know what that looked like. You know, when I was undergrad, if somebody asked me what I wanted to do, all I said was, oh, I just want to be in leadership, right? So it's just like, I had no idea really what I wanted to do. Um, however, I knew that I was great with people. I knew that I loved, you know, just um, making impact and just like selling experiences. And so I did get my initial career start in HR as an assistant. So I was one of those that worked her way up from assistant to lead to, you know, manager, et cetera. Um, and when I was, I think the key part for my career is when I was initially exposed to the world of university recruiting back in 2013, um, it made me want to go back to school, but specifically study, you know, higher education. Um, so there was, I took a bit of a break from corporate and actually spent some time in higher ed, which they call student affairs, which, you know, that's what Adrian does with UCLA. So um, I actually spent some time working within student activities during my master's degree and then you know realizing that I did enjoy the engagement with students I miss a part I miss um being in corporate to an extent for various reasons and so that's when I knew it's like okay I don't necessarily want to be a traditional recruiter anymore but I still want to sell experiences I still want to like utilize my marketing and communication skills and leadership skills and so that's how I landed up in this type of role um, as a university relations liaison awesome thanks Brittany Rihanna yeah, so I have a very similar um, kind of background to Colin and AJ, where I thought I wanted to do something and I'm now doing completely something different. I was one of those students all throughout high school where I thought I knew what my path was because my whole entire family was in a specific industry. Um, they were all nurses. So I was like, that's going to be my path. That's what I'm going to do because everybody else did. Um, and during my first year in college, after taking the prerequisites to get into the program, I realized that wasn't for me. It was probably because when I saw blood, I got lightheaded, which was probably a good indicator that that probably wasn't the best industry for me. But um, anxiety honestly kind of set in when I was in the middle of my second year trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I had to do a lot of self-reflecting, right? So I looked back on all of the experiences I've had before, which was really not that many. It was like my retail jobs, working with um, different people in customer sales roles as well. Um, and what I found out was that I really loved just working with people, right? So whether that was customer service, sales, whether that was 
working with clients, working with employees. Um, I'm naturally an extrovert, so I loved working with people and I really wanted to find a major that was broad enough where I can um, dabble in, in different areas, right? So whether that's sales and marketing, whether that's human resources, whether that's operations and logistics, um, which is why I chose business administration as my major. Um, and then after I graduated, I got into a sales role. I was able to do a couple of university recruiting projects, which kind of land me into the role that I am in today. And it took me a lot to go through different experiences to realize what I'm really passionate about. But that's why I'm here today is because I was able to go through all of that and, and realize what I really wanted to do. Um, yes, I love everything that you all have shared. Um, so different, but then also very similar in terms of you all tried something different and then learn from it and then tried something else and then learn from it again. So it takes a little bit of time and effort, um, but you all kind of eventually worked in very similar things right now. So um, yeah, very different career paths, very def definitely different um, experiences. So students, if you are taking notes about this, um, really try different things and it really doesn't have to tie in with your major or what you're studying currently. Um, it really is like what you're really interested in, what excites you, what's your passion. So um, love it. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, the next question that we have, um, again, not everyone has to share. Um, I know it's already quickly 424. So um, keeping that in mind. Uh, what is one thing you find most challenging and one thing you find most rewarding about your career? I'll kick us off. Hey, Adrian. So I, I'm an extrovert as well, like Rihanna and I'm sure the other panelists as well, but I just really enjoy building relationships and connecting with people. Like it gives me so much joy and so much like gratitude just to like be able to connect with someone and potentially have them like on board into our company. And so that aspect just really drives me waking up every day and it really fulfills me. The one thing I hate about my role is not being able to get to people as quickly as I would like. I'm all, I'm very communications driven. Like I hate having any number in my inbox when I close it at, at, at the end of the day. And when we are in the peak recruitment season, that's not going to happen. Like you're going to have to get the people the next day. So that's what drives me crazy is not being able to get the people as soon as I would like to, but it's, it's a blast regardless of that. Thanks, Colin. Anyone else? You know, I'll, I'll add to that. Um, for me, you know, whether it's in my current role at Oracle and my, or my previous company, I've always found like, it always makes my day when I get like a message or an email or phone call or text from an employee that I hired into the program telling me, hey, guess what, AJ, I've gotten promoted or hey, this is what I'm doing now in the company. For me, it's like, wow, you know, we work so hard, right, guys, to find like the best talent. And when we see them just flourish and move up and continue to uh, progress their career, for me, that's definitely the most rewarding for sure. Yeah, and I can say for me, the most rewarding is like the events, the experiences that I can just to showcase what we have going on at Visa, allowing students to take, take a deep dive on maybe some of our products, um, connecting them with our managers. Um, but the caveat to that, it takes a lot of work to put on a successful event. And just even in this virtual space, I'm shocked at how much work and energy it is taking to to just plan an event end to end. So, you know, definitely taking advantage of our wellness days, because if not, like I would be just drained. <laughs> Brittany, I just wanted to say, I hear you on that. I almost feel like in a virtual space, it's a lot more work than it is when it's live and in person. Um, but plus one, everyone said, especially the most rewarding part about your career is honestly what AJ had mentioned is that impact. Part of our roles being able to meet all amazing talent like yourselves at, on campus through these events 
and then hiring you on as an intern to do really impactful work that is going to be shown. You'll be able to see it on the platform and then come back around as full time as new grads and then seeing you just climb that ladder, just that full cycle aspect of impact that we get to see. It's so rewarding and um, really, I probably motivates everybody on this panel to keep doing what they're doing. I think one of the challenging things that I could speak for the role that I am in right now is that um, even though Twitter is a really well-known company and is considered a big company, we still in some aspects operate as a startup. So for example, my team, our campus recruiting team is three people. We are small and mighty, what we like to say. Um, but like you have all said, it is a ton of work but on the other side, what's great about that is we get to wear a lot of different hats and we get to learn a lot of skills that we have never done before, or do things we've never done before, which is awesome. Um, and I think it's, it's just great exposure being able to be in a company like that. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing. Um, yeah, I would definitely, you know, um, ditto a lot of what you all said, especially for Colin to say like the connections that he makes with students. Um, it's really important. So obviously students, they wanna to talk to you, they wanna make connections and they see that you know, at UCLA, there's a lot of great talent here. So um, again, questions and answers portion will be happening. I don't see too many questions. Um, I know we have the breakouts, but please take this time to ask a lot of questions. Um, so a, a lot of what you all mentioned were, yes, the, like the challenges and misconceptions. So I'm actually gonna kind of go forward to our fifth question, which is, what are some other, I guess, common misconceptions about non-tech roles in your company that you wish students knew about? And then additionally, can you share some of those non-tech roles that you all were mentioning in the beginning that you all have for our students? Oh, I could definitely chime in on that. <laughs> so going into um, Oracle as a college recruiter, I, you know, I was used to being on campus and working the events. But I definitely found that, wow, you know, most people who didn't have tech related uh, backgrounds or majors um, really assumed, of course, we were hiring for tech, but many other students who, who didn't come from that background assumed that's all we hired for. So that was kind of my biggest challenge at first and really because my role was to hire for not tech positions. And what's, I was trying to target candidates who didn't have a tech background, but most of the people approaching the table all had a tech background. So I had to be more creative in opening up the minds of undergrad students about all of our other opportunities. And again, the program I handle is called Class Of. So it's hiring for a business development consultant role that's full-time um, and you know, we're open to all majors with no tech background whatsoever, but we're looking for just the diversity of, you know, experience, whether it be your campus involvement um, or any, you know, part-time or internship opportunities. We're very open-minded about what you could bring to the table and we're very committed to your training and development. But outside of my business development consultant role, I could definitely speak to my other peers hiring for other roles in consulting, finance, um, and there are other roles that's more of a hybrid role um, in tech and also consulting. Um, there's so many other opportunities out there. I mean, our webs our campus website is geared to um, pretty much advertise opportunities for students or new grads that are looking for internships for zero to two years of experience. So I'll make sure to ask Adrian or Danny to share that with you all who, who's attended. So a lot of great opportunities without a tech background, that's for sure. <laughs> and I can go next. Yes. Um, I will actually say, even on the non-tech side, there's an assumption with Visa that majority of our roles are like within the banking center or like, you know, selling credit. And so we actually get a lot of that, like, oh, do I need to have banking experience? And like, no, we have traditional tech roles. Um, that's probably about 80% of um, our university focus. But even just on the non-tech side, students don't realize that we literally have a vast 
array of opportunities. Like say for example, if you are a student studying English and you might want to do something in writing or communications, like we have a robust communications team. We have a technical writing team. We have a product management team that uh, you know, if you might have a bit of background in tech, but you don't necessarily want to be an engineer, you know, there's ways for you to explore that. Um, as far as currently, our focus has been our rotation programs, as well as our consulting and analytics roles, finance roles. We have a couple of roles coming up in the pipe concerning like our communications team and things like that. Um, so yeah. I mean, I think that we have a little bit of everything for somebody um, who has a vast array of just interests. So, um, so yeah, that's what we have. Awesome. Thanks, Brittany. Colin? Yeah, so I'll share a quick story. So similar to Brittany, uh, a lot of or a misconception across the board. So tech and non-tech is that, hey, we're a cell phone provider and internet service provider which is totally true. Like that is a major part of our business, the cell phone service and internet um, provider as well. However, we have so much more than that. We're in finance, we're in entertainment, we're in sales, we're in finance, you name it. Like we're kind of like a small country in a sense over here, but um, that's one misconception that I've kind of had to battle is, hey, we're more than just the um, cell phones and the cell phone services and the U-verse and all of that good stuff. And so we definitely have, like Brittany was saying, opportunities in finance, uh, sales and then just some general internships as well where they kind of fit you based off of what your profile and what your background is and so we definitely will have opportunities coming up here in the pipeline as well. Awesome, lots of great opportunities. Um, Brianna? Yeah, I just wanted to add um, one of the common misconceptions like had AJ had said that your major defines you and your career path. It absolutely doesn't. We have so many tweets, which we call our Twitter employees, who have completely different majors from what they are doing today. For instance, my university recruiting manager graduated with um, a bachelor in biology. So she's doing something completely different. So that's a common misconception, along with what Colin um, and Brittany said, often students look at Twitter and it's an app on your phone, right? What is, what works behind it? Do you need other teams? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. If you all go to t.co slash teams, we have so many um, opportunities for internships and new grad positions under finance, legal and public policy, um, people, trust and safety, sales and marketing partnerships. So there's so many opportunities for non-tech roles within Twitter as well. Awesome. Um, wonderful. Students are now <laughs> putting in questions. Um, I know that um, there are some that are really like, related to what we're talking to right now, but we'll hold off on answering those questions um, for the Q&A portion at 445. Um, we'll just have this on our screen just to refer to later. Um, so yes, thank you for sharing all of those misconceptions and then also all the roles. Like really, all of these companies are huge. And so you have to understand all the different business units within this whole organization. So um, definitely not just tech company with tech roles, lots of non-tech roles. Um, awesome. So we have time for a couple questions. So we'll kind of go back. Um, and this one is, you know, just because of our current times with COVID, we kind of wanted to address some of these you know, concerns and questions that students have been really coming to the Career Center to ask us. Um, and so um, I think in the non-tech space, uh, what changes have you seen in non-tech roles during the pandemic, um, positive and or negative? Hey, I'll start us off. So I'll be pretty specific to our B2B sales program. So that's our entry level role for sales. Um, that we bring in new hires from our respective universities. And one thing that we've seen them be able to drive impact in is just the ability to capitalize on the increased bandwidth and the increased need for our products and services. So when you think of this new virtual world in which we live in, a lot of companies and a lot of particularly small and medium-sized businesses have never thought about doing an online order and have never thought about not having people regularly come through their locations where we're able to solution products and services to them that will help them stay afloat. So our, our sales teams have actually been busier before um, COVID hit. Um, so 
I guess it's a silver lining, if you will, that we're able to help people regardless of the pandemic and its a, a adverse effect on our population here in America. But um, we definitely have been able to capitalize on making sure we help those people in these dire times of need. So that's a little bit of a, a one example of how we've been able to drive impact during these times. Awesome. Yes, I'm sure everyone working from home and social or uh, was it le distance learning have <laughs> really had to kind of bump up their uh, internet. So um, and connectivity and all that fun stuff. So anyone else want to add? I guess for me, I can share. Um, so basically, you're just asking what changes have we seen in the non-tech roles due to the pandemic, correct? Yeah. Um, the interesting thing for our non-tech roles, we actually haven't seen much of a change as we have for our tech positions. So technically you all are in a great place, at least for our organization, um, because we've had, we've seen um just a couple of shifts in priorities on the tech side but then realizing on the non-tech side that you know although you know the world is dealing with what we're dealing with and we've had had to make some um internal decisions we have a need to still do business as usual, which includes our intern and new grads for all of our non-tech roles. So um, we're still pushing through. Well, that's good. Yeah, I think um, just from what we're seeing at the Career Center, there have been, you know, um, recruiting teams who are still, um, obviously everyone's trying to figure out like what this whole virtual recruiting world looks like. But also, yeah, um, I think students are concerned like, will I have a job? <laughs> um, are there, an, is there an increase? Is there a decrease in roles? Um, and so, you know, that's not the case for everyone where there's just been like a huge shift in a lot of changes for an organization. Um, but I guess, students, yeah, just kind of want to know um, a little bit more of just what is currently um, going on with like the job trends, with recruiting trends. Um, and so if anyone could share a little bit um, about that uh, and how students could potentially, um, and this will be like another question, but like how students can, um, you know, work uh, towards uh, being more successful in like the application process, what could they do currently? Um, during school to get them better prepared. So I can talk a little bit about, so the program I handle is the business development consultant role goes through 12 weeks of really formal training in hub. And so for us, it's a huge plus to be able to get our employees in the office and that's kind of like the fun of the whole class of program is they're essentially training within a cohort of peers that's pretty much in the same boat as them. You know, they don't have a tech background, you know, they're getting a lot of training. And that's why I think that the program's called class O because it almost feels like an extension of college, but they're getting paid as a full-time employee. So a lot of my summer cohort um, that we're supposed to start in the summer, we're very, very nervous. I would get a ton of emails from everyone trying to figure out, do I still have a job? Is my offer still valid? And, you know, I was trying to, you know, of course, put them at ease, you know, giving them peace of mind. They're, they're, they're still starting when we told them they were going to start because many of their friends' uh, offers were being retracted. So it was a really kind of scary time for everyone in the spring. Um, ideally, we would have preferred to start them in person like we normally do, but unfortunately, all of our employees right now are working virtually, and so they're training how to start virtual, and being a tech company, luckily, it's, it's almost seamless to still be able to meet our objectives and, and, and meet our goals and still, you know, work um, and, and fulfill the training, uh, but just virtually. Um, we're hoping to be able to get everyone back in the office because I think the culture and work environment at Oracle is something that we're super proud of. It's really a, a very collaborative work environment. It's not a high pressure job by any means. So we, we, we definitely miss it and we hope that they're back soon. So 
um, but it, it was quite a, a transition, but we're, we're still, uh, we're still continuing with the training. So no fear there. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing. I think, um, yeah, just like figuring out like, what does onboarding look like? What does training look like? So I think for most companies, like that's still something that they really invest time in for their employees. Um, okay. So it is close to 445. We do have one speed round question for you all. Um, please share concrete resource or best piece of advice you would uh, you received and would like to share with our students. I think go ahead um, and kick it off, Adrienne. I would say one of the best piece of advice, I actually didn't get it, but I, I came to it after I experienced everything that I've been through. But I would say whether that you're still in school or whether you're about to graduate, please take this time um, and consider it as a journey to really learn about yourself. Um, it's a purpose for you to grow, discover, and really, um, really discover what you're good at, what you love to do, what you don't love to do. And it's all just a part of that journey. And it's absolutely okay if you don't know what that is right now. I was a student that didn't know what that was. And through my experiences after I graduated, I am now in the spot where I um, am supposed to be in. So I would say, please um, keep that in the back of your mind as you're going through um, the different experiences or jobs and career path that you take, that it's all a journey. Also that um, not everyone's journey is the same. So definitely try not to compare yourself during this time, um, but you will definitely be successful in the career path um, that you choose and everything that is meant to be will, will be. Yeah, I can, I would love to share. So one of my biggest piece of advice for you, especially now is don't be so focused on following the money. So absolutely everybody wants to make money. We all, you know, want to have a great standard of living, but the one thing that I wish I knew when I was younger is the realization that if you find something that you do well and you, you're passionate about, the money will come, the salary and the benefits will come, the opportunities will come. So don't chase a job simply because, you know, it might be a six-figure six um, opportunity at the, in, at the start like I said, you know, of course we all want to have, we would love to make a lot of money, but you don't want to be that person that d worked a job or pursued an opportunity strictly because of the financial gain and be miserable. You know, we've heard stories. I've seen it. I've actually been in situ situations um, where I just wasn't happy, but the benefits were great. The salary package was great. And so if I could just tell anyone out there, like, don't be so focused on the bottom line or what you think you know about a job or what you think you know about an industry and really try to figure out what it is, is that's going to make you happy. Love that. Thanks, Brittany. My advice is just network, 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 <laughs> whether it's with the career center and their partners or with your own network or friends and family or on LinkedIn, but just network your hearts out. Yeah, I was going to use that too, but I'll, I'll go with resourcefulness. So, I mean, with us having the internet and pretty much any and everything at the tips of our hands, there should be no reason that you can't find out or find a way to complete a project or to find an answer to a question or to find information on someone. So be resourceful and utilize the resources that are out there at our fingertips. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, I took notes of all these great pieces of advice because I think it is very worth it. Um, being resourceful, I Google everything um, and I ask lots of questions. So if I were to share some advice, that would be mine. Um, but I do definitely want to move to the questions, um, question and answer portion from our students. But first wanna say thank you uh, to our panelists, Colin, AJ, Rihanna, and Brittany for sharing all of your great information. Um, I know a student had just um, put a comment saying that she had to leave er or like they had to leave early, but um, definitely can students reach out to you on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Great. Um, yes, I would highly suggest that. Leave a little note so they know how um, 
you learned about them <laughs> so that they could you know respond to you appropriately um so questions um canon um in what ways can non-tech roles contribute meaningfully and how can we be attractive on the application so aj you mentioned that you want to answer this one Absolutely. I mean, we have so many different lines of businesses within Oracle and Oracle, you know, has been around a long time, you know, they're number one in business software, but they, it's kind of the best of both worlds where even though they're very, very well established, they still really function almost like a, like as a startup, really encouraging our employees to share ideas, ideas that we can really um, use to help us continue to stay ahead and, and lead in innovation because we're counted on by our customers. We deal with customers um, of businesses from all industries of all sizes. So we want to be very open-minded with ideas presented by our employees, whether they want to impact the business on in a finance accounting role or be an analyst or be more involved on the sales and marketing side or HR. Um, we really strongly believe every employee that works for us, 130 plus thousand, really has impacted us and have allowed us to continue our success. So absolutely. And how you can be attractive, again, is really making sure that not only do you fill out the application, maybe making sure you're attending workshops that we host, networking with, you know, attending career center events. So there's definitely ways to kind of make your application stand out if you're attending some of the events that we're promoting, for sure. Awesome, thank you. Um, and yes, students, um, thank you for you know putting your questions, but also you could upvote some of the questions that you may be interested also, so that um, if you wanna hear a specific response, we'll definitely get to those questions. Um, but the next one that we have, hey, Adrian. yes, Colin, do you have something else to add? <laughs> hey, do you mind if I chime in on that question as well? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, thank you. So Willy Wonka is one of my favorite movies and golden ticket is the thing that they're looking for. Your golden ticket is your resume, y'all. You have to make sure that your resume is very solid. And I, and I say that just because like I could have the best relationship with the candidate, but when I go to show their resume to my peers and try to bat for them out there in the market, if you will, it's so much easier to bat and go to bat for a person that has a solid resume versus someone that doesn't. So I cannot underestimate how important it is to have a well-developed, well-thought-out resume. So lean on us as panelists and definitely your career center to help you out with those. I definitely will live my time, but I just wanted to add in that because I thought it was very poignant at this point. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, no, that's really important. And thanks for putting a plug for the Career Center. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, the next question was from Ria. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, what advice do you have for recent graduates looking for non-tech roles in tech companies, especially in these current times? Um, I could go ahead and chime in on this one, Adrian. To echo what AJ had said earlier about networking, 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 it's super important, especially right now during these times. Everybody is online, right? All of your recruiters are online all day, every day. Um, so I would say that that's the biggest piece of advice that we can do during these times to stand out. Um, I think for Twitter specifically, nobody or a lot of students don't really think of Twitter as a platform to network, but if you really think about it, all of our Twitter employees all have Twitter handles and all have direct messages open. Um, and a lot of students don't take that opportunity to direct message different tweets that they're interested in their background or the teams or the projects specifically that they are looking for. Um, or interested in. I can say that on my end, I answer all of my DMs as well as all of the university recruiting team. Um, so I say definitely use Twitter as a platform to reach out um, to talk to different Twitter employees across the company. Um, I've had many stories where students were able to connect with Twitter employees and get referrals. So um, like AJ said earlier, network as much as you can during this time. Awesome, yes. Um, and so we do kind of have like a, a related question um, by Ivy. 
Um, so if anyone could kind of share, uh, do you have any tips for networking virtually and maintaining these connections? So yes, Twitter is definitely a great platform. LinkedIn is another great platform. Any other great ways to get connections for students? I can chime in here. Um, so <clears throat> I heavily utilize LinkedIn as a way. So if just from the perspective of LinkedIn, mm -hmm. one of the things that I have found that has worked well for me and just my colleagues, if you would like to connect and maybe it's a blind connect, we haven't um, spoken before, be very intentional about the messaging. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that I do see students do a lot that I would say probably hinders them is, you know, sending a connection request without a message or also sending a connection request, but only focusing on what can they get out of it. So only saying like, hey, I'm connecting with you because I need a job. Can you tell me about the job opportunities? Or, hey, I'm connecting with you. Can you look over my resume? And if I'm being completely honest, and this is just Brittany, I will more than likely respond to that student who simply just says, hey, I saw that you, you know, work for Visa, there, there was a specific position that I was interested in, you know, this is my background, you know, just tell me a little bit about why they felt the need to connect with me. And hey, do you have a moment to chat? I'd be more than likely to connect with them or to have follow up conversations versus just somebody who's just sends me their resume and is like, oh, hey, you know, look at my resume and tell me what job you have. So I would just say be very cautious and very intentional and thoughtful with your interactions, especially if it's a blind interaction. Um, and don't be afraid to let the relationship build organically before you start having those conversations about, hey, what jobs do you have? Or, hey, you know, like, look at my resume. Because sometimes you really do want to build a relationship with somebody because this is what I think. I would much rather, you know, introduce myself, get a soft um, uh, conversation going to get to know the person so that anytime a new role comes up, they have me in mind versus specifically only focusing on the right now, today, tell me what you got. It's very transactional. And so um, I think in the long term, it'll work out for everybody. Yes, thank you, Brittany. I appreciate you saying, like, you know, give an introduction of who you are first, besides instead of saying, like, here's my resume, here's my resume, here's my resume. Like, yes. what is your name first? Uh, <laughs> so great, love that. Any other ways to connect virtually? Career websites. I know a lot of companies have the recruiters plainly listed on the careers website and, and may even have their email listed on there as well. So kind of going off Brittany when she was saying be in, intentional, if there's a specific role that you want, go in, look at the roles, responsibilities, requirements on that requisition, and you never know the person's name may actually be there in which you can reach directly out to them. So uh, don't underestimate the power of a careers website. Oh, one thing that I would add that just came to mind, Adrian, is UCLA has such a solid um, alumni base. <laughs> so maybe using LinkedIn, um, for example, I, I, I've seen candidates do this in my process that I thought was genius is, you know, they if they're selected to move forward in our interview process, they'll reach out to UCLA alum that currently works for Oracle and connect with them that way. And most of our employees are so open-minded about, yeah, sure, I'll chat with you to help them prepare for their interviews. I thought that was really great because the managers will ask them, well, what did you do to prepare for your interview? And that's pretty compelling to say, hey, I reached out to you know, a UCLA alum that currently works there. And you know, to, to make that connection and build that relationship was really, really helpful, I think. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Yes, there's a huge alumni pool um, of great people that students could like really reach out to on LinkedIn, but students also, you are um, able to join UCLA1.com. Um, that's through the Alumni Association. So kind of want to put that plug in um, as another virtual way to connect. Um, but Rihanna, you wanted to say a couple things. 
Yeah, I would say besides um, a lot of the platforms where you connect Twitter, LinkedIn, um, I would say you're already doing a lot of the right things if you're in this event today. So going to a lot of company events, a lot of them are usually free. Um, you're gonna get to go into breakout rooms with each one of these recruiters and talk to them one-on-one -on -one, face to face, which is a way to stand out aside from your application and resume. So definitely tend to those virtual events, especially if they're free. If you can get in front of a recruiter and build that relationship aside from your application review, then um, absolutely take advantage of that. Great. Um Thank you. So we have a couple more minutes and I did see a good amount of follow up questions to Colin's comments about resumes. Um, so we may be able to kind of like condense all of these at once. Um, so like what are some qualities of a solid resume? What is the work experience, internships, grades, activities? Um, what do you say a resume with experience at firms are more attractive than experience at school clubs? Um, yeah, many great questions. Anyone yeah, so, want to? Okay. Yeah, so I'll add, I'll add in some commentary there. So for your resume, I would employ my panelists to add, I know you have great information too, um, but for me, your resume is as a living document. So it's similar to interviewing. You have to practice that making it better. Like it's not just going to happen all at once because you went in one day and added some new information. It's a continuous thing you have to work on over time. So start now is my thing. Start now, make it better. And sort of the things we look for when I look at a resume, I look for, is it easy to find the information that I'm trying to look for? Can I easily identify where your education is, where your work experience is at, where your leadership experience is? And so just the ease of finding that information. Also, is it distracting? Is it too boring? Like make sure it's, it strikes a, a good balance of engaging while also being a little bit tame where you're not being so distracting. So there's a, there's a critical balance there. It's super easy to do. Um, all I would do is just go out there and this is kind of going back to resourcefulness, go online. There are hundreds of thousands of resume templates online. And you, once you see these templates, you're gonna be like, okay, wait, my resume isn't as good as I thought it was. And so I just implore everyone on the panel to go out there, just take a look, just set, type in top resumes and kind of pick and choose what you like from those res resumes and incorporate it into your own and make your own great resume. So that would be my advice on just making sure that you have kind of a holistic, holistically great resume that's solid. Um, and then incorporate all those things in there like student um, organizations that you're part of, externships, internships, um, your ex work experience, your education. So make sure all that stuff is in, in there and, and just work on your writing over time as well. I know that's a key thing that students struggle with is how to articulate what they're doing and what their transferable skills are. And, and it's not always easy. Like you have to practice, like I mentioned earlier. So get in there and practice and, and learn from us and the career career team. And we, we definitely will help you out with them. Does anyone else want to add anything quickly? I know it's five, but would love to hear anything the, else. The one thing that I will just say is don't be afraid to like really just focus on um, the the data that will stick out the most. Like I think sometimes students think that they should put everything, you know, every aspect of the job. Don't be afraid, just believe, you know, less can be more in this instance, especially if you only wanna focus on one page, you're not gonna be able to put everything. So if you can just translate as much as you can into quantifiable data, so like the numbers using percentages, um, amounts, you know, talking about the amount of projects that you worked on, maybe talking about if you had a process improvement, how did something improve from one to the other, you know, those types of things where you can really share your impact and then you can leave everything else to the conversation in your interview. Exactly. Yes, I think those are all great pieces of advice of how to yeah, really like beef up your resume. Um, again, I want to mention what Denise had shared in the beginning about our career center of services. Um, so we have drop ins where typically you can get some questions about um, resumes and cover letters and you could just talk to someone one to one about those types of questions. So please um, utilize your services. Also, VMOC is for resume reviews um, to kind of do on your own time. Um, 
So I will say that um, we were able to get most of the questions. I think the last question was, um, you know, what are some programs in your companies that are actively recruiting? Um, best, the best time um, to ask those questions is in the breakout, which is right now. So um, students, you are more than welcome to go into more than one room to meet all four of our panelists and ask more personal questions, more specific questions. Um, so you have the breakout rooms, um, the, the link to the breakout rooms in the email that was provided to you um, and also here in the chat. So um, Give a round of applause to all of our panelists. You guys were so amazing. Thank you much, so much for spending your time and answering our questions and the students' questions. Um, so go ahead and go into your breakout rooms and thanks again. Bye everyone.